Meeting to order for Tuesday, December 6th. Here we have roll call. Councilmember Dotson. Here. Okerberg. Here. Schultz. Here. Burbank. Here. Rainey. Here. Svendi. Here. Abraham. Here. And Mayor Kuntz. Here. We have all seven of the council and the mayor present. Thank you. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here to the meeting tonight. And with this, there are no changes to the agenda, so we'll ask for approval of, of the agenda as presented. Motion to approve. Motion by Greg Schultz to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. I'll go with Brent <laughs> on this one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Moving down to our mayor, we have a proclamation tonight. Yeah, and the proclamation is a little late. We just got it towards the end of last month, but we'll read it in December anyway. And it's uh, Oatana Senior High School DECA and it's DECA Month Proclamation, November 2016. Whereas this school is concerned with the business education and training of students for productive, satisfying careers. And whereas DECA is recognized by the United States Department of Education as a national career and technical student organization, an integral part of the career and technical education, and Whereas DECA is helping to develop leadership abilities, competency in business, marketing, and entrepreneurship, and interest in the American business system. Now, therefore, I do hereby designate November 2016 as DECA Month and urge all citizens to assist in the, according, this ob, uh, according this observation and attention of importance. It is so right entitled, entitlement to. So it's just a proclamation to uh, recognize DECA and all they do in high school in the business system. So. Okay, thank you. Next and item. after that, it is, uh, we have a uh, human rights commissioner that has uh, turned in his resignation. And I'm not sure if we want to do it in two different things or just once, but um, my recommendation to the city council is to accept the resignation of Ross Rye House, uh, as a human rights commissioner. Okay, and we need a motion on that. Uh, okay, so chair will look for a motion. Motion to accept the resignation. We have a motion by Nate Dotson to accept the resignation of Ross Reed House. Do you have a second to that? Second. I'll go with Dave Burbank on the second, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Now. And next. now we have the, the appointment. Uh, to replace Ross, and we have a young gentleman that stepped up to the plate and said he would be happy to serve on the Human Rights Commission, and his name is Ethan Cords. So I would like to have uh, approval of the City Council to do the oath of office for Ethan Cords. What is the Council's wishes on this? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Nate Dotson to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Jeff Holkerberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Congratulations, Ethan. Good luck. And moving on to the financial report, and I will ask Council Member Greg Schultz to read the financial report. The expenditures presented for approval tonight are as follows. Checks over 20000 include uh, $79,163 to Hesselton Construction for the Regional Stormwater Pond, $147,250 to Winona Mechanical for the Bridge Street Lift Station, 
$115,419 to the Southeast Service Cooperative, which is the November insurance premiums. Other expenditures of $235,502, make a subtotal of $577,335. To that we add the HRA section payments of $73,743, makes a total presented for approval tonight of $651,079.05. Thank you, Greg. You've all heard the report. What is the council's wishes? Motion to pay the bills. We have a motion by Kevin Rainey to pay the bills. Do we have a second to that? Second. Second. Second by Nate Dotson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Moving down to consent agenda items, which are mi minutes of meetings, uh, permit request, uh, board commission minutes, etc. All grouped into one uh, motion. And what is the council's wishes on this? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Brent Svenby to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Jeff Okerberg. Any further discussion on any of these items? Um, Bless. Yes. I wonder if we could have a study session probably in the spring regarding the emerald ash borer problem that's going to keep coming up. It's not going away. Okay. Uh, and see how we want to tackle that. I would probably recommend that we sit down with Chris and uh, uh, set that up for okay. sometime this spring. We'll do. Okay. Anything else? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Moving down to action items 3.1.1, relocation of tobacco license downtown tobacco to 216 North Cedar Avenue. And this we go to Chris. Thank you, Les. As you uh, will recall, we did table this from our last meeting. Um, the current owner is wishing to transfer his license. Uh, he's moving his business to an adjoining building, which is a larger space. Uh, the uh, tobacco license isn't transferable, so a new application has to uh, be made, and it's been received. Uh, he had surrendered his old license at the previous location. Uh, the tobacco license fee is $150 per year. We've received a prorated payment for the remainder of this license year for this new license, and staff would recommend approval. Thank you, Chris. Questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Kevin Rainey to approve. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Greg Schultz. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Good luck with it. And moving down to 3.2.1, second reading of proposed ordinance 16-16Z331, the zoning request from Summergate Investments at 2747 26th Street. That's right. And this we go to Troy. Yeah, this is a proposed rezoning from AO Agriculture Open Space to B2 Community Business District at the southwest corner of 24th Avenue Northwest and 26th Street Northwest. Currently, there's a house on the property um, which is in city limits and hooked up to city sewer and water. Uh, the owner of the property would like to market the property for commercial development and therefore is requesting the zone change. We did have the first reading at the last council meeting and staff would recommend approval of the zone change. Thank you, Troy. Any questions from the council? What is council's wishes? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Jeff Okerberg to approve. Do you have a second to that? Second. Second by Dave Burbank. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, this being an ordinance, ask for roll call. Councilmember Dotson? Aye. Oakberg? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Burbank? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Svenby? Aye. Abraham? Aye. All seven ayes. This has been approved, and this being the second reading is now ready to go. So. Yep, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and moving down to 3.2.2, second reading of proposed ordinance. 1716 to modify sanitary sewer rates and this will go to Chris. Uh, yes, thank you, Les. We will ask the council to table this item to our next meeting on the 20th. We have some um, billing issues to work out with OPU and ask for additional time to do that. Okay, thank you. So this at this point we'll ask for motion to table. Motion to oh. table as requested. We have a motion to, by Brent Fenby to table. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Greg Schultz. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been a tabled until our next meeting on the 20th of December. Moving down to resolutions 3.3.1, resolution 106-16 to accept Minnesota Historical Society grant for fire hall project. And this will go to Chris. 
Thank you. Um, what this is is uh, an acceptance of the city of a grant from the Historical Society and attached is the grant agreement. Um, if you'll recall, we did request a grant from the Historical Society to complete some drawings and a masonry assessment um, for the fire hall. It's in need of uh, replacement of the roof. And this is the kind of a two-step process that the Historical Society uses. You need to have this uh, assessment and scope of work completed before you can apply for a grant to, to actually fix uh, the roof. Uh, our grant is for $28,500 from the Historical Society. We have some in-kind services there of $11,080 and also a $5,000 cash match from, uh, our, from the city. And staff would recommend <coughs> approval. Thank you, Chris. Any questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Greg Schultz to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Jeff Hokerberg. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? This has been approved. Very good. Now moving down to 3.6.1 of purchase properties at 732 and 810 North Oak Avenue, and this we go to Troy. So the city has been awarded $500,000 DNR grant to remove homes from the floodplain. These are funds that are cover 100% of the costs associated with the purchase and removal of the homes. The city has purchased and removed two homes under this current grant, one on Mineral Springs Road and one on North Elm Avenue. And all funds for this grant must be used by June 30th of 2018. This is a voluntary program, so we work with property owners within the floodplain in the targeted areas. Uh, the city does have a purchase agreement uh, with the property owner at 732 North Oak Avenue to purchase the property for $26,000 upon city council approval. Uh, we also have a purchase agreement to purchase the property at 810 North Oak Avenue uh, to purchase the property for $65,000 upon city council approval. Both prices were, um, both properties were appraised to establish the purchase price and both properties plan to be closed on before, uh, on or before December 15th of this year. Again, all costs associated with the purchase and removal of the homes would be covered by the grant and the removal of the structures would be contracted out much like we've done in the past. So staff would recommend approval of the purchase of the two properties and removal um, at 732 and 810 North Oak Avenue. Thank you, Joy. Question, Nate. Well, what'll be the balance of the grant funds after these go through? Um, we will probably still have a hundred, a uh, little over a hundred thousand left. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Nate Dodson to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Greg Schultz. Any further discussion on these? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved also. Moving down to 3.6.2 easement with Steel County Humane Society has access and maintenance near Lake Chase Park and we'll back to try. So Steel County Humane Society is purchasing the property at 1855 State Avenue which is just south of the entrance into uh, Lake Chase Park. This is a State Avenue is a county road so there's limited access and shared driveways are encouraged. Um, so they're likely not to get their own driveway uh, in meeting the county's access management policy. So it is a public access point to Lake Chase and so to officially um, for them to officially have access to their property, um, they, and it probably makes sense for us as well to have something, an actual access agree, agreement. And so as they're putting plans together to per, or to build their um, shelter, um, we don't know exactly how the parking's gonna lay out and how the building will lay out. And so what we did on this easement agreement is to just state that they would have access to their property through uh, our driveway and that we would maintain it. And really at this point, with nothing being built on it, they would just really need it to get in there and mow the lawn during the summertime. 
Um, we also put in the agreement that at which time that they decide to build that we would need a separate agreement um, to talk about the maintenance of the driveway and whether there would be improvements or not to that driveway because they will need um, a hard surfaced parking lot and they would need access to that parking lot on a hard surface a driveway and so there would be some improvements needed and at that point once we know when they're ready to build and we know what their site layout is going to look like we can put together another agreement that would talk about how the improvements would be put in and who would maintain them so at this point just for them to, to, to complete the purchase having official access through our access point is what we're proposing here tonight so staff would recommend approval of the proposed access agreement with Steel County Humane Society thank you Trey so with this uh, I'm looking at the layout here the property owner that owns it now chose not to provide access well under the county's um, access management policy so they if you remember when State Avenue was reconstructed right. as a county road they dictated where the driveway access points would be to meet their access management policy and shared driveways almost everybody along there has a shared driveway yep. and so uh, this one was intended this access point was intended to not only serve uh, Lake Chase Park but also the properties on on either side so that was the intention all along we're just officially getting it in writing here okay. and then again we will have a more detailed uh, agreement with them once they make improvements to the property okay. thank you any other questions from the council what is the council's wishes on this motion to approve we have a motion by the uh, Dave Burbank to approve do we have a second 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 by Jeff Oakenberg. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This has been approved. Moving down to public comment. If anyone in the audience wishes <coughs> to speak on any item not on the agenda, please step forward and we will permit two minutes uh, for anything that is not on the agenda. So. A stamper, Roger. <laughs> that was good. Christmas. <laughs> All right. Since uh, city's interested in as an economic development commission, I want to share some uh, email conversation with uh, a utility manager who I won't name because. Uh, We've been going on for a long time with uh, this energy con con conversation. And this here, just want to be a reason I'm reading it for you is to kind of put a different perspective on, on economic development. This energy con conversation has sat in my inbox for quite some time. I don't know if anybody else here has an email that they just don't know what to do with it. So it sets there, it sets there. And this is almost a year. I've been musing over how to respond to your comment that I have a tendency to disparage electric utilities, or at least think little of them and the people who manage them. Although I can't control how I am perceived, I thank you for your honest feedback. With that said, I do not intentionally disparage electric utilities and the people who manage them any more than I disparage Walmart and the people who manage Walmart. If that seems like an odd comparison, realize we're all caught up in the economics of cheap imported commodities. Since Minnesota has no coal, oil, natural gas, or uranium, electric utilities, even utilities with fossil fuel generating plants, import all of their electric energy that isn't generated by renewables. Renewables being solar, wind, biogas, biomass. For the record, I greatly appreciate the electric utilities and the people who manage them. I'll be going to the Old Town of Public Utilities Commissioner's meeting this afternoon where my public input will be a thank you. And then before I forget, I need to also thank you for reminding me years ago about the concept of net energy. Even an energy nerd can learn things when in discussions with the general public or utility managers. As a manager of an electric utility, your task and every manager's task is to manage cost, quality slash reliability, and service. 
Although the utilities have done a fantastic job of promoting conservation and efficiency, I've seen hostility of some utilities to renewables because it costs more, unless you do an honest net cost comparison. The hostility to the renewables be because of, a, of, of cost is a utility to locally produce electricity and hence lo the local economy. This is essentially the reverse of what Walmart did to local economies. Three major challenges confronting our energy future, which is everybody's future, and I directed it to utility managers, but I could direct it to everybody. Utility managers can transition the utilities to renewables and hence local economic development. Utility managers that can transition the electric grid to a hybrid distributed generated generation grid by incorporating renewables to prevent cyber terrorists from shutting down the electric grid. And finally, number three, utility managers that can educate the general public and themselves in energy economics. More people are already employed in renewable energy than in fossil fuel. And the numbers will continue to tip in more and more in that favor. I will close with the encouragement to look and visit Germany for ideas on how to confront the three challenges I have listed above. Utility managers have a tough time managing the low energy density and intermittent nature of renewables. I believe Germany is addressing both energy density and, and energy storage by experimenting with storing electricity as natural gas or methane. And this is one I get no input back usually from. Uh, but I put the, energy, the basic energy equation that we're all talking about. CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus SuH2O plus energy. Essentially natural gas, combustion with oxygen, yields energy, and carbon dioxide, and water vapor. That equation, if you remember your chemistry, even if you didn't take chemistry, has, has a, 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 a directional sign in it. But you can put it, drive it both ways as far as I can tell, which is really the challenge because how better to do, do you deal with il extra electricity rather than putting in a battery, which is really inconvenient and, and has some real storage issues, to produce natural gas, which can run back through the uh, the generator and generate more electricity. But anyway, just wanted to share that with you to get you Thank thinking you. outside the box. <clears throat> Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on to council comment. And before we start, I want to apologize. Last uh, meeting, I had asked for someone if they wanted to step up and take over this the meeting for the next couple meetings. I proceeded and forgot to do that. So that last, I, I'd like to res respond to that. Yes, I think. Uh, I'll speak as a council as a whole. Uh, we elected you to be president for the year. And you have one more meeting to go. And I think on behalf of all of us, we want you to preside at that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I will now move on to council comment. And I will start with Nate Dotson. Nothing to add. Thank you. Jeff. And nothing to add. Great. I guess I have nothing to add either tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Dave. Nothing tonight. Kevin. Nothing tonight. Brent. Nothing tonight. And we'll go to Mary <coughs> Tom. Well, I change it. Nothing to add. Thank you. Chris. <laughs> I'm going to ruin the streak. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of things. <laughs> sorry. Uh, first of all, just uh, a reminder for everyone that uh, the Minnesota Disaster Recovery Center is open here in Steele County uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, their hours are 8 to 7, Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to 5 on Saturday, noon to 5 on Sunday. It's at the Old Cedar View Nursing Home, 1409 South Cedar Avenue. Um, and this is for all those homeowners, businesses who are affected by the severe storms and the flooding of September 21st through the 24th. So we just want to get the word out on that. Yes, sir? Front door or back door? Good question. It does not say here. Okay. I, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I wasn't for all sure. the people streaming in, <clears throat> yeah. because I'm sure there will be some. I guess um, it would be the front door. Uh, that, that would mine too, but I wasn't sure. Uh, another item I wanted to give an update on, we are going to be having a open house for Council Member Abraham in recognition of his 21 years of service to the city, outstanding service. Uh, 
on the 20th of December starting at 5 o'clock in the Art Center and we invite the public and everyone else to come and, and congratulate uh, Les on his many years of service. And then finally, I want to give council an update. We had talked about the garbage ordinance and where staff was at on that. Um, we're working on constructing, yet this winter, we're going to be working on enclosing some of our downtown uh, dumpsters. Uh, the ones that are priority are at the fire station and at the library. We're also working on enforcement beginning in January, and I'll let um, Troy kind of fill in the rest of that enforcement piece. So we've had a lot of discussion about garbage downtown and, and how to address that. And we've had public meetings uh, with downtown business owners. And um, I have talked to some of the garbage haulers as well. Um, and the garbage haulers, I mean, there can be a, a arrangements made for them to um, come in into the building to get garbage. So it's, it's a matter of working with your garbage hauler on those sort of arrangements. But I think to move this forward, and we've had a lot of discussion, to move it forward, I think what we want to start with is addressing garbage cans that sit on the sidewalks permanently on a regular basis. And I think what we want to do is, um, starting January 1st, is much like we do with the winter snow ordinances, we would start with um, kind of notifying uh, those business owners uh, that do have garbage cans on the sidewalk on a regular basis, notifying them uh, that they're not to be there and that you know we'll have information uh, on there on who to contact, probably be myself, is to work with them on how to get, um, find an arrangement that maybe inside the building or some other arrangement so that they can stay off the sidewalk on a regular basis. So we would do that by going around and notifying uh, the business owners, have a flyer uh, with some contact information and then work with them on trying to find uh, a more permanent location that's not on the sidewalk. And then, you know, we would probably work with them uh, over a period of time in trying to get that solved. Um, and then I think we would then maybe take a look at um, dumpsters that are in the alleyways. But first we're going to start with the sidewalks and see if we can't get that taken care of. And uh, we want to work with all the business owners to come up with a solution. Um, but we do have to kind of push in the direction of not allowing them on there so that we can really find a more permanent solution than where they're at right now. Thank you. Is there any possibility that uh, looking at our dumpster situation right here on the campus of doing something? Oh, that, that was the other thing. Um, we are oh, going okay. to have that on the agenda in January of the West Hills Commission. So for an enclosure up here would be a little more involved you know, with the historical designation and a brick kind of structure. So we want to start that conversation with the West Hills Commission and, and that's quite a bit more money. Okay. So. All right. Thank you, and I have nothing further to add either, so with that, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion by Kevin Rainey to adjourn. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> second. <time. laughs> Do we have a second? Okay. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. Oh. <laughs> second by o. Jeff Okerberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>